Um, I believe that the scriptures that we're going to read today about Simeon and Anna puts a challenge out there to us. As I was reading it, I was thinking, well, this, this just challenges me. And so I began to write down a few things that it challenges us to do. It challenges us to, uh, to be believers, to be believers, to be faithful, and for us to stand on the promises of God. What God has promised you. What I know that there, there's probably not one person in this congregation right now that has not received a promise from God. Every one of us at one time or another has received a promise. You received your salvation, number one, right? That's your promise. You're saved. You're ready to go. You're going to live for the Lord and you're going to see Him one day. So let's read Luke 2, 25. I'm going to start at 25. Now I'm reading this in the, um, the Living Bible. It says, that day a a man named Simeon, a Jerusalem resident, was in the temple. He was a good man, very devout, filled with the Holy Spirit, and constantly expecting the Messiah to come soon. I don't know about y'all, but when I said constantly expecting the Messiah to come, I felt it from here all the way down to my feet. I could feel the power of God just come all over me. And it was like he was expecting. he come to the temple expecting. He expected to see Jesus. He expected to see the Messiah because he had been promised. It says, for the Holy Spirit had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen him. Woo, this one's good. This is good, y'all. God's anointed king. He was promised. He was promised by the Holy Ghost that he would see. His eyes would look at the promised child, God's holy anointed king. The Holy Spirit had impelled him to go to the temple that day. And so when Mary and Joseph Joseph arrived to present the baby Jesus to the Lord in obedience to the law, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms, praising God. Now, just just think, Let, let's just stop for just one minute and just just think that that you you got a promise, you got a promise, and the Lord is, has been telling you for years and years and years. And, and then all of a sudden he he, he he tells you to go to the to the temple, that that's where you're gonna see it at. You're that's where it's gonna happen at. And you get there, and then you walk in, and all of a sudden it just comes to fruition right in front of you. And it's like, oh, I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. I don't know about y'all. I got promises i still got some promises in here that hasn't been fulfilled y'all praise the lord give him a hand clap of praise this morning i got promises and i know you do too he's going to fulfill them because see my bible tells me he's not a man that he should lie he's not going to lie to us he's not going to give us a promise and then take it away from us he's not an indian giver he's going to keep that promise Every time he's going to keep that promise. Simeon was there. And he took the child in his arms praising God. I I feel like I'm on a launching pad, Brenda. I feel like I just can't hardly, I can't hardly talk. I can't hardly read. Because I feel so excited in my spirit this morning. God is up to something. He is up to something. Lord, he said, now I can die content for I have seen him as you promised, as, as promised me, as you promised me that I would. I have seen the Savior you have given to the world. He is the light that shall shine upon the nations, and he will be the glory of your people, Israel. He will be the glory of your people, Israel. Thank you, Lord, for opening this word to us. Thank you for what we feel already in this place this morning. We thank you for your spirit, Lord, that is just moving in this place from to pew Lord from person to person God we thank you Lord Jesus and we know God that we're gonna we're gonna draw out of your word today everything that we need Lord everything that you want us to have oh we just pull ourselves up to the table of God this morning and we're gonna feast Father we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name in Jesus name Simeon loved and he honored the temple of Jerusalem 
People came from all over the place. If you've ever looked at any of the any of the things on TV about Jerusalem, about the temple, about back in the day, then you see how how the temple was so beautiful and how it was it was such a fine edifice. You know, it was it was so big and and, and they had a place for everything. There was there was just all kind of things. It was really really nice and and people came from all over the place and to they were eager eager to see eager to come into the house of God. That's what we should be is eager to make it into the house of God like we can't hardly wait when we wake up in the mornings and say oh it's Sunday morning it's time to go to the house of the Lord let's go and praise the Lord this morning. That's the way that we should be. They were looking at this place. We're looking at Him. We're looking to worship Him. We're looking for, for Jesus and this is what Simeon, Simeon was also doing. He knew he knew that he had that promised and he was just looking for it. It was such a beautiful place. And, and, and even in one place in, in Acts 3, 1 through 11, you can read it later on. There was a place on there or, or place at the, at the temple that was called the Gate Beautiful. There was a place where, and, and that was where Peter and, and uh, John uh, came across the lame man. You know the account. He said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have given unto thee in the name of Jesus, rise up and rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. In Simeon and, and Anna's day, the temple wasn't just a, a very busy place for people to come look and people to come see uh, how beautiful it was. But they were told this is the only place. You, 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 you can only worship God right here. Right here, you remember the story with the with the woman at the well, where where Jesus told her, says, "No, you don't have to. You don't have to worship right there because God is spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. We can worship Him anywhere. It don't matter where we are. We can be at a party like last night, and we be walking through. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah! It don't matter. We can be out in the grocery store. Praise the Lord. It don't matter because I'm telling you, He hears." him because the Bible says that he inhabits our praise he inhabits our praise you down and out you got something going on during this time you can't get past all these feelings that are in your in your mind and in your spirit and and and, and people all around you giving you problems begin to praise the Lord begin to praise the Lord see what happens God will bring you out quicker than you can imagine because you're praising him and he's right there. He's, he don't allow his children to be down too long. Lest we want to be. You can be if you want to be. Come on. Come on, y'all. You can say amen or oh me. It don't matter with me, but say something this morning. Because I'm, I'm ready to preach. I can feel it on the inside coming on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord makes a way. He makes a way for everyone, everywhere to worship Him. Can you imagine? I know all of you know I'm not going to get on an airplane. You all know that I'm not going to get on a ship, even though Jenny and Kenny's trying to get me there. They, you know I'm not going to get there, but I'm going to tell you, God made a way for me to worship Him. I don't have to go to Jerusalem. I can worship Him in spirit and in truth right here, right now. Praise God. Praise God. I'm getting a little bit excited. Just a little bit. But it's okay. It's okay. God's just smiling. Let's just say that. They're saying, go girl. Go girl. Go girl. Yeah. He loves us all. The man Simeon was a devout man of God though. He was so devoted to worship that you could find him in the temple many days. Many days out of the week, you could find Simeon there just worshiping the Lord, worshiping and praising God. You know, there are times, in, and I know some of you have uh, come in here, the, those of you that have keys, that you do different things. Uh, and I've seen, you know, we're, or, or been told by a couple of you that come in and, and, and just, just stop. You just come in by yourself. Sometimes it might be cold. Sometimes it might be hot. 
Sometimes it might just be right in the springtime. That's my favorite time to come in here in the, in the springtime by myself in the fall because I don't have to turn the heat on, don't have to turn the air on, you know. And I can just stand here and praise God. Praise God. You ever, you ever, you ever want to just come into the house of God and praise the Lord by yourself, give me a call. I'll drive over here. I will unlock the, car, the door and I'll stay outside or unless you invite me in but if you want to just worship the Lord I'm telling you there's something there's just something about coming into the house of God coming by yourself sometimes and just worshiping and praising the Lord there's nothing like it and I don't mind sitting outside waiting on you or give you a key I don't mind but you got to learn how to set the alarm years before Simeon had received a promise he received the Lord. The Holy Spirit had to uh, give him a message. And he said, Simeon, before your eyes close in death, you're going to look upon the promised Messiah. And can you imagine being told that? Can you imagine? We can't imagine that. Because one day we are going to set our eyes on him. One day we're going to see him face to face. We're not going to have to wander anymore. We're not going to have to look at a picture back there or, or up here and say, okay, that's, that might be what he looks like. No, we're going to see him face to face. You think about it. You think about it. He came as a babe. He, he, he walked the, the dusty roads of Jerusalem and all of the areas over there just to die for us. Just to die for us. I can't wait. I can't wait to get, uh, to, get to set my eyes upon Him and, and, and bow down and, and just praise Him and worship Him because of what He done for me. Because He loves me. Because He loves you. Simeon listened to the prompting of the Holy Spirit that day. And he came to the temple. Mary and Joseph was there. They were, they were making their way because they were going to do the customs that, was, that, was, uh, that they had to perform, dedicating baby Jesus and, and the things that they had to do, uh, uh, officially giving Him His name, Jesus. Not Joseph, because they always named, named the boys after, after the Father, you know. But no, the angel of the Lord had come and told her, His name is Jesus, Emmanuel. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, you think about it. But he, Simeon listened. He listened to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. See, that's what the Holy Spirit will do. Sometimes when you've got this feeling in you and, or you've got this thought in you, that's the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Go to the altar. Get up and sing. Do this or go pray for somebody or call somebody on the phone and tell them Jesus loves them. That's the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Listen to it, people. Listen to it more than you've ever listened. Begin this year. Begin right now listening to the prompting of the Holy Spirit because I know that He prompts us to do things to speak things into people's lives there's people hurting out there and they need us to speak the truth they need us to speak Jesus into their lives Romans 8 and 14 tells us for as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the children of God you, you, the, the enemy might tell you sometimes you, you don't belong to God. You're not, you're not a child of God. You look down at this scripture and you quote it. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. I'm led by the Spirit of God. That's what you begin to say. I'm led by the Spirit of God. They're the children of God. We are the children of God as long as we are led by the Spirit of God. Are you led? Are you led by the Spirit of God? That would be my question today. Are you led? By the Spirit of God. It's really up to each individual. You know, you've heard it so many times. You can't, you can't make it to heaven on grandma's skirt tail. It ain't going to happen, people. I'm just going to get down to Barrow County talk right here. It ain't going to happen. you got to go on your own. 
you got to talk to the Lord on your own. you got to speak to the Lord. You can ask people to pray for you. And, and, and I ask people to pray for me. We can all ask people to pray for us. But I'm going to tell you, when it comes right down to brass tacks, you got to talk to God yourself. you got to talk to Him yourself. you got to bring it to Him yourself. you got to, no matter whether you think you know what to say or not, you can say, Lord, this is Martha. I don't know what to say, but you know what I need. And then start pouring it out to Him. It's just as easy as that. That's what we do. And He hears us. The Bible says that He hears us when we call. When we call Him, He'll answer. Seek the Father's will. Not not our own selfish wills. Not our own selfish desires. This time of the season, you know that there's a lot of selfishness going on. A lot of of things happening. God does not like selfishness. He wants us to seek Him. Seek the Father. Seek not our own selfishness. Seek His plan. Seek His plan for your life. Not our plans. Not the plans that we think should happen. If we, if we have something, if we have something come to in our minds and we want to do it, we always say, Lord, if it's your will, Lord, do I do this? Because sometimes we can get ourselves in a mess. Amen? Go ahead and say it. We can. We can get ourselves in a mess. But I encourage you today, first, Seek first the kingdom of God. That's what the Bible tells us. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then all these things, everything that you need, I didn't say you won't, I said everything you need will be added unto you. That's what the Scriptures tell us. It'll be added unto us. And and the Father knows a whole lot more than we do. He knows more about us. He knows what's going to happen next week, next year, 10 years, 100 years from now. He knows what's going to happen. He, he knows if you're going to be here in, in, in 3030. He knows it. That's a long time, ain't it? <laughs> Look at Brenda. I don't want to be here. <laughs> he knows it, but he really does. He knows what's going to be, what's happening. And so it's better to trust him, seek his face, and say, Lord, I give it to you. Not just, not, not just we, don't, we don't look for just physical things. We don't want just physical things. We want, we want the, the peace of God. We want the, the joy that, that serving Him brings us. We want uh, uh, calmness. Calmness. There was one, I don't know if it was one of the songs this morning or one I was listening to talking about the calm, the peace and the calm that comes when, the, when they're uh, talking about the baby Jesus. That's what I want. The calmness in my life. Peace in my life. Joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. That, that gratitude. We need a, an attitude of gratitude. We need that, that heart full of gratitude this morning for, for what we do have. You know, some, some might, have, might have little and some might have a lot. But any, anything, anything that the Lord gives us is good. Anything that the Lord allows us to have is good. I was looking this week at all of the, all of the things in my house. I was thinking, I had this stuff burned in my head. Uh, 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 I, was, I was sitting in the living room, but I was upstairs in the attic. You know, everybody got an attic or a basement. Got, you got one, you got it full. I was thinking about all that stuff that I got. I was thinking about this side right here is all the mama stuff that was left was like two boxes. And then I've got all of my stuff. And then I got a couple of things of Joey's two or three boxes over here. All of my stuff. And I was thinking, Lord, you've given me so much. I don't even know what's up there. I have no clue what's up there sometimes. But God sees us. And he knows that we, that we had these, the desire for these things. And so we have them. God is good that way, people. I just want you to know this morning, be grateful. Be grateful for what you have. The Holy Spirit said this morning to tell the people to allow the Father to work in his time. I'm talking to somebody because I felt it go through just then. Immediately again. Not in our time, people. The Father's wanting to do something in your life, but He's wanting it in His time. And you're trying to rush Him. Don't let Him. Don't don't allow it to happen. 
Our time, you know, our time, actually, our time is, is selfish. It's flesh. It really is. Y'all can agree with me. It's all right. I mean, he's not going to hit you over the head just because you agree with me. I'm just telling you what he said this morning. We've got to remember. And remember what, what Brenda said. Um, joy. Was it joy? Jesus, other. Oh, that just, that's perfect. Jesus, others, and yourself, yourself. Jesus, others, and yourself. That's what brings joy. Putting Jesus first. That's what he's talking about right here. Right here. That's what, he, that's what he said this morning. Let me do it in my time. And then you'll see all that joy. You'll see all that joy unspeakable and full of glory. If you'll put Jesus first. Jesus first in your life. Are you getting it? I'm getting it. I'm getting it really strong right here. I, I don't even want to go any farther. Jesus first in our life. And then others. And then think about yourself. Think about yourself. We got many people in here that I could tell you that right off the bat. I, that's exactly the, what, they, what they do. They put Jesus first, others next, and then, and then they put their self last. God is good like that. I see those teenagers back yonder. They're just smiling, and so they know something. We've got to put Jesus first, don't we, girls? Got to put Jesus first, and then others, and then ourselves. And that's not so easy to do with kids during, during the holiday season because they won't be first. They won't be first. Well, on, sun, on, on Christmas morning when you wake up, wake up with a, when, if they wake you up, wake up with a, Jesus, we love you. Scare them to death. <laughs> Jesus, we love you. Okay, now it's your turn. <laughs> Mom and daddy will be next. <laughs> there you go. There you go. God is good. God is good. Seek to be sensitive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. If you're having a hard time, and I know some of us do sometimes, wondering, is this really... God speaking, is this really the Holy Spirit moving me? Seek the Lord over it. Seek His face. And make sure that, that, that tell, tell Him. Tell Him, Lord, I want to be sensitive, more sensitive to Your Spirit. I want to know that I know that I know that it's Your Spirit that's speaking to me to do this, that, or the other. Oh. The kind of sensitivity that comes with self-control, people. There's a, a good definition. Let me go back. There's a good definition for self-control, for not being, not being selfish, being self-controlling. That is instant obedience to the Holy Spirit. That's a good one. That is a good one. I don't know about y'all, but it's good for me. Instant obedience to the prompting. Of the Holy Spirit. That's sensitivity. And being and having it with self-control. Amen. Simeon did that. That's what he done. He set his eyes on the Christ child. The, the promised Messiah. He was the highlight of Simeon's life. Because he was expecting. He was in great expect, expectation. He woke up every day expecting. He, went, he got dressed and he went to the temple every day that he went. He expected to see the Savior. And that's what we should do every time we walk through the door. Is expect great things. The promised Messiah. What he, what he said is the promised Messiah would bring light to the Gentiles, their eyes would be opened and their understanding would be enlightened. Their understanding would be enlightened. People, take the challenge. Take the challenge of Simeon today. Instant obedience to God. Don't, don't ask questions. Just say, Lord, I'm going to obey you and, and just do it. Just do it. That way, the enemy don't have time to talk you out of it and then talk you out of your blessing. You'll, you'll, you'll have already, already went and said what you needed to say or done what you needed to do before he can even see that, that, that you moved. Thank God. The second thing is Anna the prophetess. She served in the temple. 
Anna had, had been married, the Bible says, just a, just a few years, and then she was widowed. And, and then we find her serving in the temple. When she went there, she just stayed. She just stayed. Now, see, when I, when I had, when, when I had, I was like 21, 22, I was, I was young, uh, already had my children. And, and I would sit in church at the Kula Church of God. And I would sit there and I'd say, Lord, if I could just stay here. If I could just stay here and not ever leave. And then I'd think about Anna. Anna stayed there. I wish that they could do that now. You know, but of course I knew that that wasn't feasible because there was no, there was no shower. Who wanted to stay in the church without a shower? You know, <laughs> not me. <laughs> but... But, you know, she was there. And the Bible says she was, it was, well, the commentaries, let me tell you. The commentaries, um, there's beliefs on both sides. Either she was 84 or she'd been in the temple 84 years. They both, they all argue back and forth. I looked up a whole lot of them to see which one. When, and it was just, so we'll just say she was either 84 years old or she had been there for 84 years. She served she didn't leave. She entered into the church, into the temple, and she stayed there. Her service to the Lord was prayer and fasting. That's what Anna done. That was what she spent her time doing, was either praying to the Lord or fasting, or fasting and praying. You can't fast without praying. Let me tell you that. Don't try to fast without praying. You got to pray and fast. Those two go together. They always go together. Anna was wholeheartedly devoted to God. She had it in her heart and in her spirit to give her whole self to the Lord. And, and she was there that day when Mary and Joseph came in with uh, Jesus. And, and when she set her eyes on the baby Jesus, she burst out in shouts. She shouted out with joy and, and praise to God. Like Simeon, she began telling everybody. Simeon was telling people, and, and, and so was Anna telling people, this is the Messiah. This is, this is the one that we've been looking for. This is the one we've been praying for. He's here. He's finally here. Some believed. She said, the Messiah King that we've, that we've been looking for, He's here. He's finally arrived. Finally got here. Take Anna's challenge, just like I challenged you with, with Simeon's. Take Anna's challenge. Worship and praise God. Praise Him anywhere. Uh, work toward, work toward that, that place of, of, of devotion. Being totally, totally devoted to the Lord. Being totally, wholeheartedly devoted to the Lord. You know, when we ask... When we ask the Lord for things, when we pray and, and we've got something on our heart, we want His attention, right? We want His wholehearted attention, right? I do. I want to know that He's listening to me, Brenda. I want to know. I want to know that He hears me. He wants you wholeheartedly too. He wants us wholeheartedly. He don't want, he don't want a half. He don't want half of us. I, th this past week, this is, this is one example, and it just dawned on me. This is why it happened, Martha, so you can tell it. This week, one of the days, I remember which day it was, I had a really hard time focusing. I had a, I mean, it, 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 was, the, it was the worst time, I think, ever in my whole entire life that I just couldn't focus, Brenda. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't read. I couldn't pray. I got down in front of the couch. I got up. I went to the, the kitchen. I stood and prayed sometimes like I prayed there. I, I, I couldn't do it. I went into the uh, living room and I went back to the couch and I said, I ain't going to the couch. I'm going to go to this side. And then I got up. Couldn't do it. I got up and I went to another place. I went to the bedroom. Jenny, I went to the bedroom where my chair's at. And I decided, okay, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to pray. I couldn't do it. Kenny, I couldn't. I don't know what was going on. Or I didn't know what was going on at the time. At the time. But the Lord was showing me, you got to be wholehearted. 
you got to be wholehearted in this, Martha. I need you devoted. That's what I'm talking about. When we get in those places where the enemy will do that to us, because that's what was happening. I was allowing it. I was allowing myself to be distracted. Come on, say amen or oh me. I don't care. Either one. Smile while you do it. But it's the truth. It's the truth. I finally, finally, after a battle... And you know, you can you you just keep battling, you just keep battling, and, and, and sooner or later the Lord will bring you through. And it's for a purpose. When when Christians go through things like that, it's for a purpose. Because the Lord just used it just now. I had no clue why. But see, that's what he does. He will use things and, and you'll sit there and you'll think, you'll think, oh, oh, I've done something wrong. I've said it. I've said it. Lord, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I, I've done something. I've messed up. But no, sometimes it's just the Lord trying to teach us. Let's be devoted. Let's be devoted to Him. When you go through those times, you just, you just go through them. Don't stop. Don't stop. Just keep going. Praise God. Praise God. Wholeheartedly devoted to Him. That's what the Lord wants. Second Chronicles 16 and 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth so that He may support those whose heart is completely His. Whose heart wholeheartedly His. She didn't get up and walk out on me, y'all. She said, just so you know, i got to go downstairs and help Tina. But anyway, wholeheartedly, it says, For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, so that He may support those whose heart is completely His. He knows. He knows whether your heart is completely His or not. He understands that. I watched a I, I watched a, 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 a little YouTube thing the other day about this uh, elderly past, uh, pastor. He had been a pastor for years. He wasn't a pastor anymore. He had he had passed away, and he came back. He was in the hospital, but for some reason he 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 died, and he came back. And while he was out, he had stood before the Lord, and the Lord told him, "says Depart from me." He said, what? Huh? I've been a a preacher. I've been a pastor for 50-something years. I've preached your word. I've helped people. I've given things to people. I've given my own money away when I didn't have it to give. I just give it to them anyway. Lord, depart from me. He said, you've done it selfishly. I had to hold on because I had to stop and start looking in my heart. Say, Lord, I don't want it. I don't want anything to be selfish in my within myself. And he said, he said, yeah. He said, immediately when the Lord told him, you've been selfish. He said, I immediately said, you're right, Lord, and I deserve everything you give me. And he said he started going down, but the Lord called him. That's the mercy of God. When you, when you get to a point and you say, Lord, you're right. I was wrong. You're right. I was selfish. I did feel this way. I did do this or I did do that. Then he'll say, I forgive you. I forgive you then. That's what he does. In closing today, I challenge us to be a Simeon. Be devoted to worshiping God. And I challenge us to be a Anna. To be wholeheartedly devoted to serving the Lord. Amen. Serving the Lord. Challenge yourself this year. Begin to challenge yourself this year to worship and to praise God more. To trust Him wholeheartedly, not half-heartedly. Don't, don't, get, up on, don't get up on Sunday morning and, and say, Well, guess i got to go to church. 
Don't say that. Yes, I get to go to church this morning. That's what we need to be saying. That's wholeheartedly. Half-heartedly is, oh, well. No, I know y'all are not like that. I'm just saying it. But for us, the challenge is to be believers, to be faithful, and to stand on the promises that God has given us. Amen. Let's stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I I was uh, in my prayer time this morning as the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. I I just saw all of us around the altar just lifting up our hands together. So could we do that before we leave? I know some of you are not going to be able to be here next week. And I understand when you've got things that that you've got to do during the holidays. I do understand that. But can we just come and just just gather as close as we can up here? Even if some of you have to get up on the stage with me. I'd just like for us all to be able. Joey, including you, turn on some music and just leave it. I just want us to gather together. You got it? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're just thankful Lord today thankful for your many blessings thankful God that we can come in the house of God and worship you and praise you that we got a place Lord over our heads a building to worship you in even though we don't need a building Lord because we have our own house our bodies our worship houses of God. We're so thankful, Lord, today for each person that's here, Father. You know their needs, Lord. And, and God, I, I, I'm not going to ask you, I'm not going to ask you for anything this morning. I'm just going to thank you, Lord, in advance. If you got a need in your life this morning, I want you just to raise your hand and I want you to begin to thank God for the answer not not your answer not the thing that you think that that should happen or the way that it should happen but you thank him for the way that he's got it worked out for the answer that is perfect for us father i thank you for my answer I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have made a way, that you are making a way where there seemed to be no way. And we glorify your name, Lord, today because we know that you're the great God, the great King, the Master, Redeemer, Ruler of everything, Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. You are our everything, Lord. And we thank you this morning for all that you're doing, Lord, for each person today. We thank you, Lord, for for the play on Saturday night, God. We thank you, Father, that it's going to touch hearts and souls, God. Oh, Father, we thank you that souls will be saved, Lord. Oh, how we praise you and worship you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, that you have wrapped your blanket of love around Kathy today, Lord. Oh, God, and her family, Father God, during this time of mourning, Lord, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, Your blessings upon them, Father God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this time together. We thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Father, I pray, Lord, today, oh, just wrap us, Lord, in your blanket of love. We thank you for that love that you give us. Because there's nothing like it, Lord. Nothing like it when you take us up into your arms, Lord. And you love us like you do. And you allow us to feel and to know, Lord Jesus, that your presence is right there. Ever present. You're an ever present help, Lord. Even in the time of trouble, you're an ever present help. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I ask you, Lord, today. I do ask you one thing. Take care of us all as we leave this place and we'll give you the glory and the honor and the praise for it's in your name we pray these things amen and amen yeah give the lord a hand clap of praise there you go Woo. 
We thank you for being here this morning. I'm excited about next week, excited about the play. It's going to be outside. I'm excited. Make sure that you bring something to cover up if it's cold. Uh, if it's raining, then they've got to figure out what's going to happen after that because I have no clue. I haven't asked. Um, let me see. Let's see. And then Sunday morning after the play on Saturday night, Sunday morning, we're just going to have an abbreviated service. We're going to do uh, communion and uh, candlelight service. And then I'm going to let y'all go so uh, that you can have a good holiday. I love you. Joey loves you. But amen. Practice also. Don't forget that. Play practice immediately.